Hi everyone, we're coming in live from Voice of Crypto from October 2049 Singapore and today we have with us a really interesting guest. We have Michael Kong from Fan uh, Fandu Foundation with us. How are you doing this morning? I'm going very well, yeah. How about yourself? Uh, I'm feeling well too. So what are your views in the conference? Quite a big gathering, a lot of web3 enthusiasts and future uh, decentralized events. Web3 looks really great, especially. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, so like look at 2049, there's always like one of the big conference organizers, you know, the organized conferences in London and elsewhere. Yeah. And there's always like a lot of attendees, you know, there's literally thousands of people, it's, you know, you can hear in the background, there's a lot of interesting people all around the world, um, but also like particularly in Asia here, obviously being in Singapore. So it's always great being at 2049, and I appreciate, you know, the opportunity to speak here to meet a whole bunch of people. Absolutely. So the world of decentralized finance has been involved, we've been used to involve uh, Foundation has been at the center of this evolution. How have you seen this space change in the last couple of years? What sort of change do you anticipate in the next couple of years? Yeah, so uh, very fortunately, you know, we had an individual known as like Andre Cognier. He's quite well known in the DeFi space. Um, you know, Walker Fan from the very early days before DeFi, you know, 2018, 2019. And in 2020 and beyond, you know, he really got like time to involve very much early in the the DeFi ecosystem. So, you know, Phantom, as we know it, as like, you know, a DeFi chain, it's had like tremendous amounts of TVL. Um, I know like more recently, that's been like negatively affected by some events like uh, mortgage chain. Um, but I think, you know, we're seeing like a whole bunch of like newer, I guess like DeFi products come out, more sophisticated products that we haven't really seen before, um, rather than just like, you know, the, uh, the nexus that we've had in the past. And that's why I find like very like interesting exactly. I think, you know, once the interest rates start getting lower again, uh, once the market conditions improve, I think there's the uh, significant return into a lot of DeFi activity that's kind of gone down over the past like year or so. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about your role and Phantom Foundation? What do you do with Yeah, sure. So I'm the um, Chief Executive Officer, CEO, point of quote, of the Phantom Foundation. Uh, but really, like, I work quite closely with you know, a whole bunch of team members, you know, like Andre and himself on a like, daily basis, general daily basis. Um, a lot of my role revolves around um, really kind of like expecting the CEOs, like attending conferences, you know, speaking, communicating, that sort of thing. But I'm also doing like, you know, a lot of like one day administrative work as you need to do. But also like, it's just very exciting working with like a whole bunch of teams, like Google Giant and like both the technical side and the business development side. Um, it's really great to see like, like the progress and the milestones that the team helps achieve, you know, that you're kind of like part of it and like helping to like lead it. So, you know, with like my role, it comes like, you know, a lot of responsibility, but it also comes like a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of like pride, I guess, in like the, the team's work as well. So, as a CEO, I'm sure that you have to strike balance between uh, user needs as well as the last week's regulation, especially looking at what's happening in the process. Uh, there is sort of a bit of tension in terms of regulation and with yeah. regulation. So how do you actually to balance or strike the balance between that and offering the right sort of products to your users? Yeah, so that's a great question and it's something that we spend a lot of time actually focusing on, uh, you know, doing our analysis of and just looking at the landscape. So, so the interesting thing is that, you know, there are some jurisdictions that, you know, have not taken, shall we say, their real view to crypto, unfortunately. I think a lot of it comes from what I've been reading about, like, ignorance, not reading short what it is, you know, looking at, like, bad stories that have come out in the press rather than focusing on, you know, the good stories and balancing it out. Um, that being said, there are some like really, really good jurisdictions that have taken like, pretty much the exact opposite of crypto, right? They are really highly educated themselves um, about like crypto and about what it is, and they see that like there's a real industry, there's a lot of potential there, and that you know they should try and cut past it. So like one like place in particular is like the Bahamas, right? So like if you look at the legislation that they do with the Bahamas, they have something called the DARE Act, right? Which is like a digital asset like regulatory act, right? And you look at the definitions of like you know, criminal state, criminal work, um, your entities, and all these different categories, like point of point, like uh, blockchain or digital assets. And they, the definitions there are really, really good. You know, they're like very accurate. So you can see that the, like the, the government officials are really educating themselves as to like what crypto is and thinking that, okay, 
this is like uh, you know potential potentially really good for the economy, and we want to foster that sort of growth. So we'll have a good framework in place where you know legitimate people can be really productive and create you know lots of jobs and productivity. Whereas I know the bad actors will be forced to stay out of these regulations against. Them. So I think that sort of approach is really important like the same for others. I think you've also seen another good example from the UAE, and I hope more countries kind of like learn and educate themselves about like, what the industry is and kind of think more in that sort of direction. Absolutely. So privacy and safety still remains a concern for a lot of FTA users. However, the other thing people have spent a lot of time is to get more people on board into this space. Uh, how to address these issues of privacy and security while having a long term goal of onboarding more users of your platform? Yeah, so privacy and security, it really comes down to like what sort of application you use, right? Yeah. So if you're happy to use an application that, you know, where the, the, the blockchain data is sort of in public, um, and there's a lot of advantages with having really public data, then, you know, there's more transparency, you know, you, you know there's, more, like, information, there's more like information that's being shared on the network, so people, you know, don't feel disadvantaged by information that's being created, like, for example, when they're engaging in DeFi products, and that's perfectly fine. But if people want to, like, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, reserve more of their data, I guess, like in a privacy preserving manner. Then there are like uh, a number of like, different technologies that are coming out. You know, most notably, there are like zero knowledge proof technologies that may allow you to kind of like you know, prove that you can understand a transaction without knowing the specific of the transaction. That is like a, a, a big question to talk about, like not just from a technology point of view, but also from a regulatory point of view. Because obviously, governments like having a public blockchain there because they can see the data going in and out. Uh, so that's sort of like the question that I can't like really answer at this point, like how the government will react to it. Uh, in terms of security more generally, you know, I think, you know, as we know in the blockchain industry, there's been a lot of like the security incidences, the security incidences that keep um, going on, right? you know, you see them in the rest of the That being said, you know, I, I work kind of like in blockchain security as well, I've seen for like the past few years and lots of research is it. And I think what like how security has kind of progressed in this space, it's sort of like what you expect in a new industry. You know, a lot of people forget that the blockchain industry is not like cash exhaust, right? Yeah. Like smart contracts have already existed for less than ten years, I think for like eight years now, right? And the amount of like knowledge that people had about smart contracts, say in 2015 and 2016, were very, very minimal. We weren't like particularly aware of like certain vulnerabilities. Now there are a lot more sophisticated tools, there's a lot more knowledge out there, there's a lot more being done. So I think the security issues over time to do with um, like say smart contract technology or blockchain technology in general will get better and better and better over time. Absolutely. Now one another uh, emerging technology that a lot of entrepreneurs are excited about is artificial intelligence and especially the convergence of blockchain technology and artificial intelligence. Uh kind of foundation we also keen on certainly I thought I said I already working on them or have plans for the future. Yeah um, we kind of thought about like the AI and how AI is going to be applied to blockchain. And to be honest, right now, we're not really sure what, like, specifically what the use case is combining to do. But we don't want it to be seen as combining two buzzwords into like one thing. Let's yeah, say yeah. that, you know, oh, we've created some new product that isn't really useful for people. So that's something that we want to do a bit more research about and not just like jump on the hype because, you know, blockchain is like a popular word or AI is a popular word and combine the two. So that's something that. We have to do a bit more research about you know there, there have been ideas also about you know being able to like set up trade and like AI based on and kind of like tokenize it, which is an interesting idea. But I don't really know the more specific use cases than what I'm possibly at this point in time. That has to be more balanced answer. Uh, any insights or products that we or our viewers can be expected from the time of foundation in the near future? Yeah, so like on the technology side as I presented yesterday at the conference. We've got this really, really like amazing new like smart contract technology stack coming out where users can still you know write their smart contract in Solidity at the point of time as they do right now. But we've managed to significantly increase like the proof of the network by a factor of like seven to eight. We've been able to reduce the amount of storage you provide on the network between 90 and 95 percent. And I think in all this technology updates, you know, we're not just doing these technology updates for the point of time because we want to write papers and big crowd customers, right? We're doing it because it's, we're solving a really, really important problem, which is if you want a blockchain network to become scalable, right? If you wanted to have any decent number of users, um, and more than just like one or two applications, you really have to solve this technology problem. And so that's what we're doing. On um, the, the ecosystem side, I know that you know we've had some issues, say, with like, the chain that I just mentioned, but we have like 
high level applications still get a lot of traction more recently, even given the market conditions. So one game that we did was called Just Four Kingdoms, so kind of like an RPG based game. And they've managed to um, be a top 10 game um, across all blockchains. They're a bit more popular than some of the well known blockchain programs out there right now, like Axie Infinity. Uh, they've got tremendous amount of traction and a lot of back, and they've had no issues with scaling their um, uh, scaling the user base of and so far. So that's like one really like, popular application that we've seen on the gaming side, and I hope we can get similarly popular applications and more popular in the future. Absolutely, we've got this. Do you have any kind um, I just like to say to everyone out there, you know, that despite like you know the market conditions and like what's happened to that more specifically to the mortgage chain, you know, that is here to stay. We have you know a, a decent treasury. We're going to keep building and growing exactly as we planned for before, and you know um, we're, 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 we're better conditions in our time. You know we will continue to grow a lot bigger than we were say at 2021. I am sure if someone like you better than look back, I'm sure that. Thank you so much for talking with us today in this session. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.